Today we will learn about single layer neural network. I'm Nurujaman Faruqi and welcome back to the course. Before starting, let's see how neural network and machine learning are related. We can implement the model of machine learning in various ways. Neural network is one of them. Very simple, isn't it? Notice carefully, we have neural network in place of model and learning rule in place of machine learning. In machine learning, the process of determining the model is called machine learning. And in neural network, the process of determining the neural network is called learning rule. In this lecture, we will learn the learning rule of single layer neural network. You may think, what about multi-layer neural network? Well, that is what we will learn in the next lecture. It is always good to start with something simple. So let's get started. If we memorize something, our brain stores the information. We can store information in computer as well. Both brain and computer can store information, but their mechanisms are very different. In computer, the information is stored at a specific location, whereas brain alters the association among neurons to store information. The neuron itself has no storage capability. It just transmits signal from one neuron to another neuron. We can tell the brain is a gigantic network of neurons and the association of neurons form specific information. We are talking about the brain because the neural network imitates the mechanism of brain. Brain is composed of connections of neurons and neural network is composed of connections of nodes. The neural network mimics neurons association which is the most important mechanism of brain. So in human brain what is neuron? A neural network that is node. Human brain use association of neurons whereas neural network use connection weights of neurons. So what is connection weights? Let's take a node x1, x2, x3 are signals entering the node. The y is the output. The w1, w2 and w3 are corresponding weights of the signals. And b is bias which is associated with storage of information. Simply speaking, the information of neural network is stored in form of weights and bias. The input signals are multiplied by the weights before entering the node. The output of the node is the weighted sum. This equation clearly shows that higher the weight, the greater the effect. For example, say W1 equals 1 and W2 equals 5. Then signal X2 will have 5 times more effect than that of x1. If we assign w1 equals 0, then x1 signal will not have, will not be transmitted at all. That means x1 will have no effect on the network. We can write the equation of the weighted sum in matrix form. Here w equals to w1, w2, w3 and x1 equals to x1, x2, x3. The output of the node is processed using activation function. Activation function determines the behavior of a node. So output of a node of neural network is y equals to phi v equals to phi wx plus b. Where phi is the activation function. Neural network is a network of nodes. Different types of neural network can be created by different types of connections among nodes. However, 
the most common type of connection is layered connection. Here the square nodes are input nodes. Input nodes transmit the input signal only. They do not calculate weighted sum and do not use activation function. This is why we use square nodes to distinguish them from other nodes. The rightmost nodes are output nodes. We get the output from here. The layer between input and output nodes are called hidden layers. They are called hidden layers because they are not accessible from outside of neural network. The neural network has been evolved from a simple architecture to a more and more complex architecture. At the beginning, the neural network had only input and output nodes. This type of neural networks are called single layer neural network. Later, a hidden layer were added to single layer neural network. This type of network is called shallow network or vanilla neural network. And when there are two or more than two hidden layers, it is called deep neural network. In layered neural network, the signals enter the input layer, pass through the hidden layers and leave through the output layer. That means the input signals advances layer by layer. In other words, the nodes of a layer receive signals, process them and transmit them to the nodes of the next layer. Let's start with an example. Here is a neural network with single hidden layer. For now, let's take linear activation function for each node. I've mentioned earlier that no calculation is required for input nodes, so leave it as it is. However, for hidden nodes, we have to calculate the weighted sum, and also we have to pass the signal through activation function. Here, the weighted sum of the first node of the hidden layer is 6 and the output from the linear activation function is 6 as well. In the same way, the output of the second node of the hidden layer is 11 and the output from the linear activation function is 11. You may think the output from the activation function is same as the input value why we are using the activation function. I'm using linear activation function. That is why input is same as output. And I'm using linear activation function to make it easier to understand. Let's express the output of neural network in matrix form. Notice carefully the weights of the first nodes are in first row and the weights of the second nodes are in second row. So we can represent the output using generalized equation. Here x is the input signal vector, b is bias vector, and w represents the weight matrix. That means x is 1 and 2, b is 1 and 1, w is 3, 1, 2 and 4. Now we have the output of the hidden layer. This output will be transmitted to output layer. So the input to the first node of output layer is 6. And the input to the second node of the output layer is 11. Let's calculate the output of the output layer. First take the weight matrix. Here it is 3, 2, 5, 1. Then take the input signals. Here they are 6 and 11. Finally, add the bias vector, which is 1, 1. So our output is 41, 42. Remember, we always take the output from activation function. In this case, the linear activation function will give us output same as input. That means 41 and 42. So we have calculated the output of neural network. The calculation is pretty simple and straightforward. And one more thing. I use linear activation function. This makes this example easier to understand.
However, practically it is not correct because if we use linear activation function, mathematically a multi-layer neural network becomes similar to a single layer neural network. That means the hidden layers become ineffective when we use linear activation function for them. There are many training methods. In this lecture, I will cover only supervised learning. Supervised learning is like finding the correct solution. That means the correct answer is already known. Consider these are our training data and we already know that the triangle is the correct output. So supervised learning is a learning rule that will train the neural network based on already known correct output. In supervised learning, we first initialize the weights with adequate values. Then we take the input from training data. The input is formatted as input correct output. The output from the neural network is then compared with the correct output and the error is calculated. Then we adjust the weights to reduce the error. And we keep repeating step 2 and step 3 for all training data. These steps are similar to learning process of supervised machine learning. In supervised machine learning, we modify the model based on training data to reduce the difference between the model's output and correct output. The only difference in case of neural network is change of values of weights. Simply speaking, in machine learning, we modify the models. In neural network, we modify the weights. Neural network stores information in terms of weights. That means to train a neural network with new information, you have to modify the weights. The systematic way of modifying the weights is called learning rule. The representative learning rule of single layer neural network is delta rule. It is very simple and straightforward. The difference between output and correct output of neural network is the error. Based on the error, we adjust the weights of the network. That's it. Mathematically, we express the process using this equation. Here, Wij is the updated weight and this Wij is previous weight. Xj is the output from the node j where j equals 1, 2, 3 and so on. Ei is the error of node i and alpha is the learning rate. Its value is in between 0 and 1. The learning rate determines how much weight is changed every time. If the value of alpha is too high, the output wanders around the expected solution. And if the value of alpha is too low, the output fails to converge to an accepted solution. Let's take an example. To keep it simple, I'm considering there is no bias for output node and I'm using linear activation function. That means the weighted sum is directly transferred to the output. Look at the subscript of weights. The first digit represents node number to which the input enters. For example, the weights between the input node 2 and node 1 is denoted by W12. Now, if we apply delta rule, this neural network will yield these three equations. Let's summarize the training process. Step 1. Initialize the weights. Step 2. Calculate the error from the difference between output and correct output. Step 3. Calculate the weights updates. State 4. Adjust the weight updates. State 5. 
Repeat step 2 to 4 for all training data. Step 6. Repeat step 2 to 5 until the error reaches the acceptable level. When all training data goes through step 2 to 5, it is called an epoch. That means one training iteration for all data represents one epoch. If we repeat step 6 for 10 times, then epoch equals 10. The delta rule we have just studied is actually obsolete. Normally we use generalized delta rule. It is expressed as this equation. It is similar to delta rule. However, there is one difference. There is the EI has been replaced by delta I. Delta I is defined as 5 prime VI and EI. Here, EI is the error of output of node I. VI is the weighted sum of the output node I. And 5 prime I, the derivative of the activation function phi of node I. Recall that we used linear activation function for the example. The derivative of linear activation function is 1. If we substitute the value of 5 prime, delta i becomes e i. That means when we use linear activation function, the generalized delta rule becomes simple delta rule. In other words, delta rule is only valid for linear activation function and we will not use linear activation function that means we will not use delta rule instead we will use generalized delta rule we are going to use sigmoid function as the activation function this is the sigmoid function the first derivative of sigmoid function is this and by substituting the value of derivative of sigmoid function, the generalized delta rule becomes this. So, we have learned how to get the updated value of weights using generalized delta rule. The next task is to update the weights according to the value we have found using generalized delta rule. We can do it using SGD, BAT or MINIBAT method. SGD stands for Stochastic Gradient Descent. In this method, error is calculated for each training data. And the weights are updated immediately. That means, if we have 50 training data points, the SGD adjusts the weight 50 times. The behavior of training process of SGD method is random. And the performance of the neural network is crooked while undergoing the training process. In that method, errors are calculated for all training data. Then, each of the weight updates are calculated, but the average values of all of the weight updates is used to modify the weights. As a result, the weights are updated only once in each epoch. Mathematically, weight update of batch method is calculated using this equation. Here, delta wijk is the weight update for k training data. And n is the total number of training data. Because of average weight update calculation, the training takes long time in batch method. The mini batch method is a combination of SGD and batch methods. In this method, part of the training data is selected. Then the network is trained for batch method with the selected data. For example, if there are 100 data points and if 20 arbitrary data points are selected, the batch method will apply to 20 data points. That means total 5 weight updates will be performed to complete the training process.
The mini batch method has the speed of HGD method and the stability of batch method. So far, what we have learned is enough to implement a single layer neural network. Let's train a network in MATLAB. We will implement this simple single layer neural network and we are going to use supervised learning method. That means the correct output is already known. These are the inputs and these are the corresponding correct outputs. Our target is to train the neural network in such a way that for these inputs it will produce these outputs. To do it we have to create two functions and two scripts in MATLAB. This function is the activation function. This function is to train the network. Using this script, we will call training function, train the network and save it. Finally, using this script, we will load the trained network and test the performance of our network. First, create a folder. Let's name it neural network. After that, launch the MATLAB. Now, locate the folder we have created in MATLAB's current folder window. Create a new script. Save it as sigmoid. Declaring the function's output, name, and input. Here, sigmoid is the name of the function, the y is the output, and x is the input. In the theoretical section, we have seen what sigmoid function is. This line is the implementation of sigmoid function in MATLAB. So, our activation function is ready. Now, we will implement the second function. Let's save it as SGD method. This function gives trained weights as output and it takes initial weights, training data, which is input here, and correct output as input. Taking a for loop, it will iterate for four times. We need to transpose each row of the input because this is our neural network and these are the training data, that means inputs. We cannot transmit all three of the elements of first row like this. However, if we transpose the row, then we can transmit each element at the same time. In our next line, we are loading the correct output. This line will calculate the weighted sum. In this line, we are processing the weighted sum using sigmoid function. Calculating the error. Now, getting the value of delta using generalized delta rule. Using this line, we are calculating the weight update. Finally, updating the weights. When we will call this function, it will train a network with provided training data. Now it's time to use this function. To do it, create a script. Let's name it training. Taking the inputs, these inputs are the training data. 
Now assigning the correct output, initializing the weights. Now we are calling the SGD method function for 10,000 times. That means the weights will be updated for 10,000 times. Finally, saving the trained neural network. If we run this script, it will train and save the neural network. Let's run it. And you can see a neural network named trained network has been saved here. The training has been completed. Now it is time to test our neural network. To do that, create a script. Let's save it as testing. Loading the network. Now taking the testing data. Finally, inside a for loop, transposing testing data, calculating the weight updates and generating the final output. Now run the program. These are the outputs. This one is the output for first row of training data. This one is for second row. This one is for third row. And this one is for fourth row. This is the input and correct output pair. And this is the input to and output of our trained network. So this is the expected output and this is what our trained network has generated. These two outputs are almost equal. So in conclusion, we can say we have successfully trained a single layer neural network. We are at the end of this lecture. If you find this lecture helpful, please subscribe.